is peace of mind just for the rich and famous? Is it that you don't deserve to get help in meeting your goals and managing your family and keeping all of the balls in the air because you don't have the same money as Beyonce? Well, I would tend to disagree with that statement, and so would my guest today, Amber Anderson. Amber and I are talking all about how to get the help that you need in this modern world with two income households. At the same time, how to make sure that you surround yourself with the people and the systems and the structure so that you can flourish in business and life. If you've been struggling and you're burnt out and you feel overwhelmed, you got a baby in one hand and a laptop in the other, and you're holding your ear to your shoulder with a cell phone in between then this, my friend, is the episode for you because it's the one that maybe will be just what you need to give yourself permission to move forward with a lot more help and a lot more freedom. All right, let's go. Welcome to the Flourishing Entrepreneur Podcast with Alea Harris. This is the place where you and your fellow empire-building entrepreneurs Come to vanquish the burnout monster and boost your glow and cash flow with energy alignment techniques and tried and true marketing strategies. Since seven figures won't get itself, hit that subscribe button and never miss out on your chance to skyrocket profits, tap into your intuition, and manifest your dreams. And now, your host, powerhouse story brand certified guide, award winning marketer, bioenergetic business coach, and Japanese whiskey lover, Alea Harris. It's not really your fault that you feel overwhelmed, is it? I mean, yeah, every decision you make in your life, you either created, promoted, or allowed. And I mean, yeah, you have full responsibility and accountability for what goes on. But overwhelm is something that happens to you, right? Isn't that how that works? <laughs> Hopefully by now you could tell I'm being sarcastic. That is not how that works. <laughs> if you are overwhelmed, here I am for some tough love, it's your fault. It is your fault because you have not put in the systems, you have not asked for the help, you have not found the resource, you have not made that spiritual connection that you need to tap into your intuition to come up with better solutions. If you are overwhelmed, you're doing too much, you're not doing enough in one area, or you're trying to go it alone. None of those are great ways to build a life or a business. So if you constantly find yourself saying things like, God, I'm so overwhelmed. Oh, I'm burnt out. I'm so tired. Oh my gosh, what is this? Ooh, uh, ee, uh, ooh. And you're a complaining Janie, then it might be time to reevaluate the way that you have structured your life. If you're a business owner, hopefully inside of your business, you have something called standard operating procedures. Your standard operating procedures allow you to delegate tasks. They say, this is exactly how it's done. This is the goal. This is the tool. This is the password, whatever it is that you need to get in and get this job done without me and my oversight, a standard operating procedure. But do you really have that within your own home life? If we're really honest, by the time we get to our home life, we are SOP'd out. We can't even do anything besides get some maybe Pinot Grigio and sit on the couch. That's the only P we're trying to we're trying to think about, right? Instead of approaching your business from a systematic way and leaving your home life just willy-nilly, I would suggest coming up with SOPs for your home life as well. Who does the laundry? When does it happen? Who does the dishes? When does it happen? Who does school pickup? Who does grocery shopping? Who does the, the food preparation? If you notice, running a household is a full-time job. You also might notice that you will have a full-time job as well. If you're like most of us, we live in dual income households and it's not like how it was in the 1950s where the wife would stay home and cook and clean and heels um, and, and a beautiful ball gown, right? Gosh, I hope that that was not actually what happened. <laughs> but 
what it is like is trying to find a new normal. And if that list that I gave you about grocery shopping, kid pickup, if that is a huge source of stress for you, it's time to outsource it. And luckily we talk about that in this episode with Amber Anderson. But what holds you back from having that life now? Well, a lot of the times it's because we are shooting all over ourselves. I should be this kind of parent. I should be this kind of mom. I should be the one to cook the meals. I should be the one to do all the grocery shopping. I should be the one to do all the laundry because that's what makes me a good wife, mother, partner. That's not true. Your value does not lie in your ability to fold a fitted sheet. If it did, I would not be very valuable. I've gotten better at the fitted sheets, but it's still not my jam. If your value lie in you and your ability to run a household as if you just miraculously didn't work a 10 hour day, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to ever keep up with that. So don't place your value in an antiquated custom, an antiquated thought about who you are and what you are quote unquote supposed to do. It's not gonna work. Instead, take a real good look around you. And I would consider making an awareness list. Think about all the areas of your life, your home life, your personal, internal spiritual life, your work life, the words you say, the actions you take, your routine. Take about five of those areas and take a full day. It would even be better to take a full week and write down your awarenesses in those areas. I would pay special attention to the words that you say. And then take a look and review Is that the life that you want? Do you want to spend Saturday evenings folding laundry? Or would you rather spend it on date night? Right? Is it that you want to actually do grocery pickup and grocery shopping with your kids because that's that's family time and you enjoy that, but you want to outsource something in your business so that you can have the freedom to do that time? Baby, the world is yours. You can craft it however you want to. And you, again, are a powerful creator. However, if you are not intentionally creating something, you are unintentionally allowing it. And when you unintentionally allow something to happen to you, you are still accountable for it. However, you get the chance to live in denial, which makes it a lot harder to get out of that place. Instead, take responsibility, take accountability for your life, the processes in it, and then make a decision. Choose to focus on what matters. In fact, that is our mantra for this episode, my beautiful friend. I choose to focus on what matters. I choose to focus on what matters. Say it with me. I choose to focus on what matters. I choose to focus on what matters. If you decide what matters to you and then you realize all the other stuff that really does not matter, cut it out, delegate it, don't do it, ditch it. Focus on what matters so that you can craft and curate a life that you love. Our guest today, Amber Anderson, is is pretty boss at this. She's kind of a pro. After a decade in the wedding and events industry, Amber Anderson, founder of Heavenly Day Events in Austin, Texas, pivoted her career into coaching others. As a host of Refine for Wedding Planners, Amber desires to coach and mentor planners via the largest Facebook group exclusively for wedding planners by offering a course, retreat, membership, podcast, and templates. Amber is known for having radical honesty. It is super appreciated. Often saying what most people are thinking but won't say. And she strives to elevate the industry one conversation at a time. So she is also a boss. Like she was able to take refine from a sleepy $30,000 success built by a previous owner to a quarter million dollars in under two years. 
So when you listen to this interview and you hear her talk about getting help, getting assistance, moving forward with a support system, you're not listening to someone who is just like, yeah, I'm telling you to do, do this and it costs me a whole bunch of money. So I now only bring home $10,000 a year. No, 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 uh, no, uh, no, uh, no. You're listening to someone who has been able to find that sustainability and harmony in her life that she will talk about a little bit later to truly become successful in all areas. Now, is anybody perfect? Absolutely not. But if you're listening to this podcast, then you, like me, are most likely looking for kernels of wisdom, guiding lights to get yourself closer to the life of your dreams. And this episode, I think, is going to be really powerful for you to do that. All right. Let's dive into talking to Amber. This episode is brought to you by Bioenergetic Business Coaching by Flourish Marketing. Do you wake up feeling tired? You can't build your empire if you're cranky and exhausted. If you're fed up with fighting a losing battle against the burnout monster, it's time to fix the root causes of your issues and get aligned. Turn up the wattage on your glow and cash flow with effective business strategies. Bioenergetic business coaching is for growth getting entrepreneurs who know they need to make a change to see better results and reach their goals. If you want to unblock your energy and unleash abundance, head to www.flourishmarketing.co slash coaching to become a client. Now's your chance to step into the role of CEO, Chief Energy Officer, and flourish in business and life. Go to www.flourishmarketing.co slash coaching to get started. Hey there, Amber. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Flourishing Entrepreneur Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's always good to see you. Always good to see you. And you're looking fabulous, my dad. I love the top. I love the hair. Even the lip gloss is popping. For those of you who are not watching the video, you can head over to YouTube just to see Amber's fabulousness. (laughs) I don't know. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're at risk. (laughs) Before we dive into what you have that's fabulous in your life and the gems that you have to offer, why don't you first tell the people who you are and what you do, including the problem that you solve in the world? Of course. Thank you. So Amber Anderson and I am the face and owner of Refine for Wedding Planners, which is a community that serves wedding planners in really all stages and seasons of business ownership, even those that haven't quite turned into a wedding planner, but are seeking to learn how to become a wedding planner. So I offer templates and retreats and all kinds of stuff. My mission is to help wedding planners work less and make more boundaries, all of those things. I love it. And you've been really successful. The refined community is super strong. Um, I've spoken in your community before. I'm always impressed by the quality of engagement. So you've done a great job cultivating yeah. that community. You should be really proud. Thank you. Well, I, I, they, they, the people are the people and they are real. They are. They're so engaged. I'm proud of them. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be engaged in your own transformation, right? Because you have a good point. No matter how great of, of the infrastructure and your time and your love that you give to them, they eventually have to do the work themselves, yeah. which is and that's, very that's a big part of my philosophy in leadership is like, I, you know, you've got to help people help themselves. I can't hold your hand forever. So I kind of have a little tough love style to me where I'm like, uh, you can you got to go from here or like, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> and take it away. <laughs> yeah. All you. So, I love yeah. it. People, entrepreneurs really do need that for sure. Yeah. You mentioned um, in, your, in your intro that you helped them, you know, make more money, you know, by kind of doing less work and really kind of not having to do all the things because that can lead to burnout very, very quickly. And mm-hmm. um, I've been in burnout. Mm-hmm. I Sometimes I'm just like, oh my gosh, I've married burnout. How do I even get a divorce, right? Am I, I going to have to split all my stuff in half? Like <laughs> we've been intimately connected. Yes. And I know you've had experiences like that before, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
that's why I'm so, I mean, that's why I'm so passionate about it. I am a product of Refine. I'm, I'm not the founder of Refine. I've acquired it a few years ago, which you know, but for your, you know, listeners, um, I'm a product of Refine. I went through uh, business coaching with Allison, the founder of it. And the things that I learned, I mean, changed my life. And so we can say that as educators all day long, sign up with my, sign up with me. It's life-changing. Like I, that's literally <laughs> what I experienced. And so now I'm 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 in a position where I can give that back. And it doesn't mean that life never comes with burnout or hard seasons. Like I just I just kind of catching my breath from a hard season with MBA, Thanksgiving, Christmas, COVID, refinery tree. It's kind of like, ah, oh, February will be my new gene, like my start of the year. And so um, but I can only do it because of the tools that I put into place, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's really about those tools and systems. So talk to me a little bit then about some of those tools and how you've used them to avoid burnout or recover from burnout so that you stay in alignment personally and professionally. Yeah. So I, first and foremost, am a big believer in, uh, you've heard me use the word boundaries already. And I feel like if anyone's been around me for two seconds, they've heard me say, uh, saying no to one thing means saying yes to one thing. So a lot of my tools are more mindset oriented. And what I mean by saying no to one thing and means saying yes to another thing is when I say no, dear client, I can't meet on Saturday morning. It means yes to the client whose wedding is that day. And we have an emergency that morning I can put out and all clients will get the same level of respect. And it means no, on the one Saturday that I don't have to work wedding, I'm going to go hang out with my kids because that creates balance in my life so that I'm sustainable and I'm still here for you in 10 months when I, you know, everyone else is tired. So it's not that I'm saying no, because I'm trying to be complicated and difficult and can't work with you on a Saturday. It's just, that's not how I can serve you best. That's not, that's actually not what you need. And so look at flipping the, flipping that script and learning, um, People ask for what they think they need. It's best for us to give them what we know they need and what works best for the sustainability of things. So boundaries is um, a big tool in my, that's, that's one of my biggest weapons. Um, I think my physical and spiritual health is also very important to me. I, um, the, the gym is a non-negotiable in my routine. I, it helps with my, not only just like physical strength, especially in such a demanding job, but my, my mental health. And I can tell when I don't go for a week or so, I'm like, God, my brain is just, I'm, I'm grumpy. Uh, That's, that's my, that's my brain juice. And so my physical health and then my spiritual health, it's all like, it's all about mind, body, and soul to me. And, um, so like I said, my tools are a lot mindset oriented, but focusing on, um, those kinds of things that matter in my life, getting to the gym, um, being in scripture, whatever that may mean for you and your your spiritual realm of beliefs and, um, and, and developing discipline around those things. I think that um, wordsmithing is another little superhuman ta- tactic that I have in my little pocket. So um, I have found that a lot of people come to me for help with like figuring out words. And that's that's part of a big thing that you do you know, like figuring out the right words to respond can really disarm things in in a situation and disarm people and disarm tension and all of that. And um, I am not have a lot of missteps on that. But I find that that alleviates so much stress and burden in my life because the approaches that I take with people, um, you know, you can really step on some bombs just in your approach and and well-meaning or not. So um, kind of a not a non-traditional way of answering that question, but yeah. I love that. I especially, yes, we, we do words here at uh, Flourish Marketing. That is literally our bread and butter. And <laughs> wordsmithing and the approach, as often people don't think of that as protecting themselves. They think yep. about, oh, let me be nice to someone else. And really it is. If I can maintain this relationship, if I can go through this conversation in a way that's productive for everyone, I'm avoiding the 45 minutes of whatever drama might come Mm -hmm. if I said the wrong things, sent the wrong email, approached it in the wrong place. And But I do also think that word, um, the wordsmithing is 
informed by the other tools that you mentioned, because if you're not in a clear headspace, you're not wordsmithing anything. You're not even yeah. worried about wordsmithing anything. You're like, just pick it up off yeah. the floor. <laughs> it's whatever it is. Yeah. You're like, no, I have no time for you right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. And so you have, that's why I said it's all about mind, body, and soul and that balance. And, you know, I don't want to get too woo woo about that, but that really does matter and make a difference. And, um, you can yeah, all that simple discourse this goes a long way. What well, was that? Yeah, absolutely. I said, you can get all the woo on this podcast that you okay. want. Okay. I don't know where day. we are. But, but, okay. Sounds good. I think the last thing I'll mention in there that is, less mindset and more like practical is surrounding myself with people that are smarter than me. Um, I can't tell you how many mentors, smart, wise mentors have instilled that in me. And I see it to be true. I don't, I don't want to rely on my own answers. And, and we can think of that in all positions of leadership. No leader knows the answer to everything, but if they can listen to the people around them, and get different perspective, diverse opinions, um, diverse lenses, man, it makes a difference. So I, I can really um, position myself. I, I, I find myself to be healthier when I'm surrounded by good voices and I get to pick what those voices are. You know, I'm not going to just listen to everything. So I want to align myself with the right values and the voices that are coming my way. But um I think that protects me and I think that protects my community. Absolutely. That you get to make that decision. And I love that you surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. But I, I also, I surround myself with people who are smarter than me. And then uh, I mess around. I'm like, oh my God, they're smarter than me. I'm so stupid. Dumb. I will figure it out. So when you do that, don't like, when you do that, you've made a conscious decision to tell your ego to step out of the way because you're yeah. trying to move forward. Then Absolutely. don't bring your ego back in after you are surrounded Absolutely. by these smart people, right? Just keep Absolutely. your ego in the back seat and allow it to be like, hey, I'm surrounded by these smart people. I am also smart. I have gifts. I have value. Uh, this decision will not activate my imposter syndrome. <laughs> A hundred percent. And one way that I word that when I'm coaching people, because you and I are in a couple smaller groups with different, you know, uh, people for marketing this, that, or that, you know, and um, I wouldn't necessarily say like, oh, smarter than or whatever, so much as like just pure collaboration. And um, even that can create imposter syndrome. And the way I coach around that to people is we all have different goals. So smarter or not collaboration, like peer equal peers or not, like however you look at it, you and I can be the same level of smart and have very, very, very different goals and do things different ways and still be able to encourage and motivate and inspire and mentor each other, you know, but like the way I do it and the way my like exact competitor does it are going to be very different based on our goals. And that's okay. If they pay, if they post on Instagram five times a week and I post twice a week, that's my prerogative and that's their prerogative, you know? Absolutely. I love that you mentioned that because there's, there are competitors in the sense that there are lots of wedding planners. There's lots of florists. There's lots of marketing agencies, for example. Right. But if you really peel back layers every single one is unique and yeah. you have to have a collaboration community approach because you will not get anywhere on your own my favorite referral sources my favorite colleagues are other marketing agency owners <laughs> and it's because of them that i've been able to get to where i am so 100%. you can never think that you need to go it alone, right? No. It's, it's not a great idea. Yeah. One of my <laughs> direct competitors, is, I mean, and Alea knows this and maybe others listening, but like my work life, we're direct competitors, but we call each other our work wives because we were talking all day, every day about ideas and we collaborate and we partner on things and then we go do our own stuff. And, but there's just, there's room for it and it works. Yeah, it works. And you don't feel like you're alone. That's the thing with entrepreneurship and why Refine is great. Why we have a membership called Own It that's great because 
Otherwise, you are sitting in your office, which probably also is like your kid's playroom or also <laughs> your bedroom or all like, right? When you're first getting set up, exactly, guest room, there's like office slash, slash, slash. Oh, you're thanks. sitting in there by oh, yourself trying to make magic happen with you and a laptop and a ring light. And that is a very quick way to lose your inspiration, to lose your creativity, to lose your purpose, because yeah. your purpose is not confined to those four walls. So when you get out and you get those external perspectives and you get get yourself a work wife, I have a work wife as well. <laughs> I'm a big fan of my work wife. And I'm just like, hey girl, um, I don't think I know what I'm doing right yeah. now. I have all the balls rolling and none of them seem to be going in the direction I told them to go. They're very ornery yeah. balls and they've decided that they wanted to roll in their own direction. Help me. Okay. <laughs> I even texted, I texted, I, texted Renee, I texted Renee right before we got in this and I was like, is Kajabi down? Like our main software. I was like, why, why isn't, is nothing working? Is it just me? And then I realized, I went into the Kajabi Facebook group and realized, no, everyone's down. So it's like, just stuff like that. Just affirming, like, do I need to go to Random Starbucks? Stuff. Is it my Wi-Fi? <laughs> like, so. Right. And it's also like to celebrate with someone who really actually understands. Yes. Right? So yeah. that has helped me. That's a burnout tool as well. Like, because like you can talk to your husband, you can talk to your friends, and they like, cute, cute, cute. <laughs> Uh, but they don't really get it. Okay. Or like my husband's a college okay. professor, right? And so everyone knows what a college professor is. Like, you know what a college is, you know, that it has teachers in it. You see movies, you get it. Yeah. So people are constantly asking yeah. him like, how's, how's your work or what are you doing? Oh, you're a professor. That's so cool, 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 cool. And I'm just like the wife who is a big ball of confusion, They're like a marketing agency. <laughs> of course. So like... Do like they, I feel like they think like Mad Men, like somehow I'm like <laughs> Don Draper or something. Like, I don't know what they think I do. Well, <laughs> I mean, it can be, you know, there are so many different rabbit trails for that. I mean, it can mean five different things. So, yeah. Five different things, five million different things. And so it's nice to have that community, whether it's Refine or Own It or your work wife. That is a burnout tool. Someone who gets you that you can yeah. say, I landed this deal or I did this thing. And they actually understand what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> oh. You know what else is, and we were talking about this oh. earlier before we started recording is another one of my like big burnout tools is my family assistant. So like a house manager or however you like, I don't, we're kind of evolving into this being more normal. So I think we're still working on the language of what that looks like in our society. But I think a lot of times I think, I would love to normalize the, like this whole thing because I think a lot of us have that reserved for rich and famous and that sort of thing. And no, we now like, this is not the 1950s where mom stays home and, you know, makes dinner every night and everything's clean and all that stuff. We're really a society of dual working homes and whether we have children or not, the home still needs care. And so I have someone that comes in for 10 to 15 hours a week and helps with laundry and meal prepping and clutter management and running errands and walking the dogs and all of those things. And so um, that has been really life-giving to us. It has transformed our, our marriage in a way that um, it's just so good because then on the weekends or when, you know, I, I've pulled back from weddings. I, I am, I'm, I'm more coaching now, but you know, our kids are at an age now where they've got soccer games and birthday parties and all the things. And even if they didn't, like, I just don't want to do all, I don't want to do laundry all day Saturday, every weekend, mm -mm. No. you know? And so, and if that's all you're ever doing, that's an absolute burnout. You know, you're just staring down the barrel of that gun and that's not the way I want to live my life. And so for 10 to 15 hours a week, having someone just getting that done. That means that when we all come in from work or school or whatever, all I have to do is put that dish in the oven, warm it up, and then we sit at the table and actually eat dinner. And I have proximity with my family to, for our conversation. And it's not just this hustle and uh, oh, dishes and oh, you get in the bath, oh, the homework, bed. Ugh. It's like we actually get to sit and breathe and be present together. And... Um, that's been really life-giving to us. So that's been a huge burnout yeah. for me. And it helps. I can't tell you how many times I've coached people on 
you know, they want to delegate and they need to delegate and they're having a hard time letting go of stuff because, you know, in our businesses, we're so particular about things. And I say, what about who's doing the laundry? That still takes your time. Oh, I can outsource that. And then I can focus on whatever I love inside my business and I'm good at because it's going to, it may, it may be a financial wash. There were things that I had outsourced in my business that I was really good at and I really enjoyed. I just can't do all of it. And then my husband presented this idea and I was like, oh, well, I can take the budget for those things. I can bring that back in house because I loved doing them. I can do them now. And then I'll, I'll use that money to outsource the stuff I don't like. I don't like doing that stuff. I'm not a good cook. No one eats my food. I don't no. like to put laundry away. You know, I'm already going to the gym. I, I can't walk the dogs too. So, but they deserve that. So I took that money and I shifted it and I saved so much money too on impulse buys because I'm not doing the, I'm not going to Target. I'm not buying all the stuff. Oh yeah, Target is a horrible. You go in this there how, thinking you're yes. going to spend $200, $500 later. John was trying to talk me into this and I was like, oh money, I don't want to add anything. And then I went to Target to get cupcake mix and icing. Should cost me 10 bucks. I spent $146 on what? And I came home and I was like, okay, if I paid someone $20 an hour, how many hours could I get out of that Target run? And I was like, oh my gosh, someone could have done all my laundry for that. And I was just so, I was like, okay, I'm in, let's do it. So yeah, I was like, done. So I stay out of Target. I don't impulse buy. I don't throw food away because you don't waste it. There's just so much, there's so many other ways to offset that cost. So I love that you brought that up because a lot of people do like what you say. They're like, I can't ever afford that. It's for me. I'm like, you can't afford not to, I don't have kids. We don't have a dog. However, I'm looking at a bag that I just picked up off of my porch last night of my laundry that is folded and washed and neatly put in. I like it when I our laundry out. Yes. Like when I go on, so we um are my in-laws have a lake house an hour from town and we just would never go because it's like you pack up all the stuff, you come home, you gotta unpack all the stuff, and it's like Ugh. now I go and someone else unpacks all the stuff. So I actually go and use the things that our family has invested in for our relaxation, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but that it's really important to me amazing. that, yeah, but it's really important to me because I do have children that they see that as part of having a dual working home. It's not that like, oh, here's the silver spoon I'm putting in your mouth. Like they're still given responsibilities in our household and have chores and see that like, we don't take advantage of that. Um, it's just part of like, yeah. This is how society is starting to work. This is how mommy gets to spend time with you. Right. And it's and it's interesting too, because it, it, it's different when it's, well, I mean, even with just me and my husband, two adults, but I run a business and he's a college professor. So we don't have a lot of extra time. Yeah. And truthfully, you get to a point where you're just like, I run a business and you're a college professor. Why the hell are we doing our own laundry? <laughs> In LA too, it's like I, you it have to make think it about work. you while you are working, you're thinking about all the other stuff you have to do. Like you've got to water the plants. You've got to all those things. And like, maybe they don't like burden you throughout the day, but that's just clutter in your mind. And I'm telling you, I make more money yeah. now that I know I'm not thinking like that stuff. I don't think about it anymore. And so I'm like, I can get creative. My, I have more brain cells for that. And so then I apply that to my business and I apply that, ener that energy and, you know, the headspace to my business. And now I'm making more money in that way. Yes. And it's nice, like at the end of your day to not be like, oh, now let me start my second job, know, household management. You don't have to do course. that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think a lot of the things that hold people back in this regard, that asking for help is feeling a sense of unworthiness. They don't deserve this. Yeah. What do you tell for people yeah. that have that perspective? Um, think about your clients. Who are you serving? They deserve the best of you. So if it's about deserving and like, you know, then flip it, make it about your clients. Say my clients deserve the best of me. Okay. Well, how can I be at my best? That means I have to be rested. It means I have to pay myself a, 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 a market wage. It means that I have to market myself in a way that people value paying my price without nitpicking at it. It means that I have to enjoy my friends or my family or 
the other things that I'm called to be a good steward of my home, my, you know, my car doesn't need to be junky all the time. That was an investment. Who spends all that money? On it? Like, you know, and so make it about your, if you can't, if you can't make it about yourself, which I say you should do it, but start with making it about what your clients deserve. And then eventually you'll start to see the relief of that and it builds confidence. And all of a sudden that turns into this, like, you know what I do, I do need this. And maybe take the word deserve out of it because, you know, deserve is a, a word we could debate. Right. I think that, you know, right. right. Does any, do any of us deserve anything really? But like, what are our needs? What are like, basic mm, human needs? Very interesting what are, yeah. yeah. What allows for sustainability and for health and balance and harmony and, you know, I don't subscribe to this whole work-life balance thing. I think that like, it's more about work-life harmony and just like, you know, one week I may work 60 hours a week and the next I work 10 hours. Like that, I wouldn't call that balance, but I would call it harmony. It means I'm still getting to do the things I want or need to do. So absolutely, I'm going to flip it in that way. I, I love that advice. And I also love the question that you asked. I want to reiterate it. What allows for sustainability and harmony? Because people, when they make decisions about how to get help, where to make their investments, how to move forward, they tend to be very short-sighted. They're like, well, I'm okay right now, so I really don't need an assistant. Or I'm okay right now, so I really don't need to hire for this position. But really, it's about what is the long-term plan here? Because if you don't put in something in place now, you will be incredibly burnt out in three months from now. Mm -hmm. And then you'll need much more than an assistant. You'll need a therapist. You'll need a coach. You'll need a nutritionist. You'll need a doctor, right? Yeah. It gets even more expensive from I'm here as it, opposed I'm to gonna, proactively taking care of yourself. It does. And I'm going to put it in other terms because I think a lot of us tend to fall in the sword of being a martyr in our own businesses, right? So like we kind of get, we have a hard time looking past that. So I'm going to put it in terms that like all humans, I think tend to understand. Let's talk about a baby with colic. Okay. That gets annoying. I mean, that's hard. It's just, a, I, and I went through this. My second daughter had colic, just cried for seven hours straight. I mean, just day in and day oh. out, just cried and cried and cried. And can you imagine, like, whether you've been around babies or not for long ever, like you go to a restaurant and you hear a baby crying, you're like, oh, I just wanted to eat my meal in peace. Right. So now imagine in your house all day long, just a screaming child all night long. Okay. Picture that. Feel it. How do you survive that Ooh. for six months? The only way you survive that is when someone does say, you know, I see that you're going through call it. Can I come hold? Can I come? walk the baby for an hour it's only an hour yes please because then i can have an hour to myself without that like nail coming down the chalkboard feeling in my body so that yeah. i don't later shake my baby right right, right. like we Absolutely. get that as a society we understand that like okay there's a colicky baby we've got to help mom survive this because that's how babies get shaken yeah absolutely apply that, apply like, that to your stop. business yeah. Like don't shake the business. Don't shake your, don't, you know, like, so I don't know how easy that is. Maybe that was a terrible example, but like, I feel like we all understand that just I think like, that it's an example uh, that everyone can understand. Yeah. Like yeah. we understand you don't want to get stepping to that in to help. We understand accepting help in situations like that. But we have to look at that with our businesses too. If someone offers, yeah, the answer is yes. Take it. Take that help. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? We've covered so much ground. I haven't asked all of my traditional questions, but I do want to ask you one question, which is okay. the journal prompt question. And then feel free to add anything else that you may have been able, may want to add, because I think this conversation has been amazing. But our journal prompt question for you listeners out there is a question that you can then take away now in your journaling time to explore, you know, who am I? How do I resolve this issue? And Amber has graciously volunteered to answer the question first. Amber, are you ready for your journal prompt question? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, that is just wonderful. Your journal prompt question is, what would my life look like if, if I let go of the need to control? Okay. I've experienced that. And my life now looks like the things that we're talking about. I've got that harmony. I don't, 
I'm not nitpicky in these, my husband and I don't have these micro misses over the clutter pile over the dinner reservations anymore. Like the micro misses are gone and the micro misses are what explode into tornadoes yeah. that, that weren't, a, that weren't a thing in the first place. And so, um, freedom, I've experienced freedom. My life looks mm. free and it's still hard. I still have really hard seasons and overwhelming days, but I now have hope. Like I feel like, oh, but it's hard today, but that's okay. Cause I've got a system in place that makes tomorrow better. Ooh, say that again. It's hard today, but you what? say it again, Amber. It's hard today, but I have a system <laughs> in place that makes tomorrow better. I think that that is something that most people don't have. And so they f get into these bouts of despair and depression and sadness and anxiety and resentment over their business and resentment over their life because they don't understand how tomorrow will look different. They have lost hope. Yeah. But you have your family assistant, you have SOPs for your family assistant, you have uh, standard operating procedures for those of you not in the know with the lingo. You have a way to make sure that a rough period does not become a rough life. And I really appreciate that wisdom that you have, yeah. uh, that you've shared. Yeah. No, I feel like um, <laughs> letting go can be really hard. And to me, back to the family assistance, like she does our, she cooks our meals. So like, if she wants to organize the pantry a different way that makes sense to me, then like, I don't care. Like she's the one using the pantry more than me. So let go. And I can, I can look, I can use my words with my husband now and say, Hey, the next month it's going to be really hard. I've got to be heads down on this project, but I know that by this date, we're going to be coming up for air, but I can only do that now because of the workflow and the system in place. I, otherwise it was just kind of before it was just kind of like, you just go until you're not going anymore. You never know when. And, so yeah oh that sounds rough now I, now I can communicate it and you you're able to manage expectations in your relationships yes. so yeah. that your husband's also not like oh my gosh is just is this it's life now? Yeah. because it's also not fair to him either yeah right? yeah absolutely because yeah, then all wow. those weeks that are going to be busy he's like cool i'll just go play but i'll just go I'll go do some golf with my friends or whatever. And he's like, not worried about it. So. Right. Right. I love it. Well, Amber, is there anything else that you would like to add? Any other pro tips, any other words of wisdom? Oh gosh. I just don't cut corners. Do it the right way. Um, invest in yourself. Mm. It takes money to make money and that sucks and it hurts to hear, but whew, it's so true. But it's, you gotta invest in the right places. Yes. And I promise I did not plant Amber to say this, y'all. However, we do have a guide for that because I wholeheartedly agree with you. If you go to flourishmarketing.co slash own dash it, you can actually, that is for our, our membership. Whoops, that was a Freudian slip. If you go to flourishmarketing.co slash invest, that is where the guide is. I like <laughs> and that it's you the business guide building that. essentials guide. No, cool. See, I didn't and even We know definitely that. have a guide on that. Because, people, see? In sync, Amber. In sync. I'm, I'm writing it down. I, we have a guide on that. Yeah, share share with the people. We have a guide on that mostly because newbies and new business owners that are bootstrapping don't really understand that. They're they're watching every little dime, and you want to be very careful of how you're spending your money. But you also need to take a bigger picture and say. What do I want to accomplish and how much money is that going to take? And am I willing to do that? If I'm not, if, if you have that conversation with yourself and you're really not willing to invest that 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 500, whatever it is to get you where you're going to go, then just save yourself the headache and don't do it yeah. because it's much better to not do it than to be scrimping and scrape, you know, scraping and always stress because you don't have the money to invest. It's yeah. better to say, I'm going to keep working at this job for a month, but I'm going to live on half of what I make and take that and then go invest and have a plan for it rather than jumping in willy nilly and just expecting everything to be free. Yeah. No, I mean, money's so, real. I'm going to get real. off my high horse for that. <laughs> no, I, I have a product that's like 200 bucks, 250, and it literally saves wedding planners three years of trial and error. And who knows how many thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of missteps. And so, it's like two two hundred fifty bucks is real money. Which product is that? Do tell, do share. 
um, our wedding planning process kit. And um, it is A to Z, a workflow and a system of the meeting agendas, um, all the forms and things. I don't, it just, ugh, there's a, it's all listed on the website, but that, I mean, that seriously, by the time I got it, because again, a product refined, I've, I've, I've built it and I've, ref I've revamped it every single year that I've had it. But, you know, when I got that in year three of my business, I was like, well, WTF, I could have just started day one with this product and not have had to go through all that blood, sweat and tears. I was so pissed. I was like, where was this when I started? <laughs> you know, and so again, product of it. I believe it because I've lived it. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, that's an amazing product. If you're a wedding planner, you want to, you know, basically a shortcut so you can focus on your authentic story and your differentiation and have like the, the basics handled that's for you. I definitely yes. suggest going taking that out. Yeah. yeah. Checking it out. Well, Amber, this has been an amazing conversation. You're, you, by the time we're done, I'm going to just have outsourced everything um, <laughs> in my life. I'm just going to be like, I'm, my job is to be a layer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, but, I hope that, I hope you do. Lots of freedom. Yes. Yes. Lots of freedom. That's what we're after here for sure. Tell the people where they can find you, how they can learn more about Refine, how they can, you know, learn more about Amber Anderson. If they have a question about a family assistant, what what All can the they things. do? Where can they track you down? Yeah, All the I think the easiest thing is to hit me on Instagram at Refine for Wedding Planners because I have the link tree in the bio. So then you can find all the other stuff. And I will say if you want expansion of thought on that particular topic that we've talked about today with the family assistant, I do have a season of a Refine podcast. Um, COVID kind of turned me upside down and I've not done a second season. Uh, but I have a, an episode called family. It's, it, I, I can't remember the exact name, like family assistant. Look for those keywords in there. And I talk about it in more detail. If you want some more information about that, I talk about how, where to find people, paying, training, all that. So, yeah. But I'm happy to answer questions. I love it. I yeah. love it. Well, Amber, thank you so much for joining us here on the Flourishing Entrepreneur Podcast. It has been a joy to have you. Well, thank you, friend. This episode is brought to you by Own It, the energy-centered monthly membership program you need to build your thriving six-figure empire in 12 months without feeling burned out, overwhelmed, or lost. After having reached six figures in five months, Alea created Own It because she discovered the only way to leave a legacy of abundance is to own your business instead of it owning you. Ditch the guesswork and hustle mentality that lead to daunting 18-hour days, missed family dinners, and stress-induced rashes. In Own It, you will join a supportive community of your fellow empire builders to take a holistic, step-by-step -step approach to craft a flourishing business and life via proven marketing frameworks, money-making business strategy, and centering alignment techniques. To join, head over to www.flourishmarketing.co slash own dash it. Your life has a greater purpose beyond the struggle. Join Own It today at www.flourishmarketing.co slash own dash it. My goodness, isn't Amber a breath of fresh air? She's the antithesis of just grind it out until you make it happen. And you can do it. You're a superwoman or hustle hard, right? She is basically sitting here telling you, no, don't, don't hustle, don't hustle hard. You're going to have to work at it and you have to take accountability, but get some help. And I love that narrative. And I don't think that we talk about that narrative nearly enough. In this episode, she talked about boundaries, saying no to one thing means saying yes to another thing, physical and spiritual help, focusing on what matters, developing rituals wordsmithing in your approach to people and how even that can help remedy some burnout. She also, of course, surrounds herself with people that are smarter than her, but I think that she's a pretty smart cookie because she also has her family assistant slash house manager. That role in and of itself allows her to have the freedom to be there for her family and her business at the same time to achieve true sustainability and harmony in her life. 
Amber is an amazing coach and Refine for Wedding Planners is great if you are a wedding planner. If you're not a wedding planner, I invite you to check out my membership, Own It. Own It is the membership for those of you out there who are looking to hit your first six figures. We over here did it in about five months. And I want to teach you how. I want to give you all of the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you can do exactly what works and not worry about what really doesn't work. If you're interested in that, please, please, please go to flourishmarketing.co slash own dash it. Also, if you just really want the quick and dirty of what do I need to make as an investment? Because you know it takes money to make money. Then make sure you go to flourishmarketing.co slash invest to get our business building essentials guide. That guide will break down what you absolutely do need to invest in financially, emotionally, spiritually to build a business and some of the things that you really probably don't. So make sure you go to flourishmarketing.co slash invest to download the business building essentials guide. All right, that's it for this episode. I will see you back here on Wednesday because you know what? We release an episode here every stinking Wednesday. (laughs) It's fabulous. If you want to know what to do for your weekly source of inspiration, I invite you to join us back here next week on the Flourishing Entrepreneur Podcast. Again, my name is Alea Harris, and I want to send you lots of love, light, and abundance. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Flourishing Entrepreneur Podcast with Alea Harris. Dive into the show notes at www.flourishmarketing.co slash podcast and connect with Alea at Flourishing Entrepreneur on Instagram. Vibing with what you hear? Leave a five-star review to spread the love and be sure to click subscribe. From the entire Flourish Marketing team, we wish you love, light, and abundance. See you next time.